Okay, so I'm presenting, uh, my president in politics is Nancy Pelosi. She is a House Democratic representative of California. Um, so to begin, here are some general facts. She has a uh, strong family background in politics. Um, her father actually served in Congress and was also the mayor of Baltimore for about 12 years. And on top of that, her brother was also the mayor of Baltimore. Um, and then after graduating from Trinity College in 1962, she moved to San Francisco with her husband. And from there, um, in, from 1976 to 1996, she represented California in the Democratic National Committee. And finally, in 1987, she, <coughs> through a special election, was elected the um, California's, uh, at, she won the special election uh, for California's 8th District. And then, in 2001, she became the House Democratic Whip, and a year later, uh, she was elected the, um, uh, the, the first female Democratic leader. Um, and then four years later, uh, in 2006, when Democrats were the majority in both House and Senate, she became um, the first female Speaker of the House. Uh, and finally, in 2012, um, Republicans regained control of the House, and then she became the uh, minority leader and has been serving that role since. Um, and ever since her special election in 1987, she's had a very successful uh, political career, gaining um, overwhelming support. And as you can see, she's also done a lot for women, um, and, which earned her a spot in the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2013. Okay, so whilst Pelosi served as a speaker, the 111th Congress was heralded as one of the most productive Congresses in history by <laughs> Lindsay, um, who is an American political scientist and um, a scholar at the American uh, Enterprise Institute. Uh, um, she, she also has been regarded as the most powerful woman in American politics by the Christian Science Monitor, which is a newspaper um, that covers the world and international events. Uh, <laughs> during her secretship, uh, she's uh, covered a variety of topics, um, such as the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which created and um, saved millions of American jobs. There's also the Student Aid and Fiscal Responsibility Act, which um, expanded educational opportunities and saved billions of taxpayers' dollars. Um, there's also the Patients' Bill of Rights and provided insurance for about 30 million Americans. Um, the, she raised fuel efficiency standards. Uh, and also there's the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which um, fought pay discrimination for women and all workers. So as you can see, there's a large variety of issues that she covers, um, but the general trend is towards health care and education and creating American jobs. Um, and currently she serves as a minority leader. Um, the minority leader is elected by the um, minority party, which in this case is the Democratic Party. Um, and the leader acts as a representative of the party and protects uh, and supports its policies. They also help devise strategies that will help promote their, um, uh, the party's uh, policies during legislation. And the minority, minority leader also chairs the committee assignment panel. Uh, so she chooses um, kind of who goes in which committee. Um, and she also, they, they recently announced which assignments go to which um, representative. Uh, and I don't really cover that. Um, and the minority leader, as well as the Speaker of the House, also serves on the House um, Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Um, which I will speak more about later. So her primary source of power is her key influence in the decision and the advancement of the Democratic Party. So her main sources, or her formal sources of power are through, uh, other than her role as minority, minority leader, is through the um, House Appropriation Committee, which she was previously in, um, and currently the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Um, as a senior member of the House uh, Appropriations, Appropriations Committee, um, she, it, it was considered a super A committee and controlled and dealt with the various appropriation bills. For example, 
Uh, recently, there was the um, $1.1 trillion omnibus bill. Um, and this committee holds a lot of power because of its control over spending, and especially since um, the bu government budget is going up, um, their, the power of the committee uh, increases as well. Uh, and it's also a pretty exclusive committee, meaning that it's committee members usually aren't in any other committees. And even though she's not part of the um, committee right now, it does set a, a precedence and uh, this bolsters her credibility and in her power as a congresswoman. Um, and meanwhile, in the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, or on Intelligence Committee, um, uh, the committee oversees the actions of the CIA, FBI, DIA, Department of uh, Homeland Security, Energy Justice, etc., uh, etc. Et so Pelosi has very direct access to um, security policies of the United States, and this power can sway uh, intra and international relations. Um, to be a little more clear, uh, the policies <coughs> from this committee can um, really determine uh, diplomatic relationships between the U.S. and whatever foreign country. Uh, and a more informal source of her power is her relationship with Obama. Um, as Nancy Pelosi has been has proven instrumental in uh, passing a variety of Obama's legislations, especially in regards to health care. In 2010, she convinced the presi president to push for the health care affordable uh, health care act, um, despite the co president's considerations for a more compromising solution, especially against the um, words of. Uh, the White House Chief of Staff, um, and within a two-month period, this kind of marathon two-month period, she led the crafting of the health care bill, which eventually successfully passed in the House. And this enabled the growth of a strong relationship between the House Democrats and the President, which in turn earned the President's support. Um, and what I've learned from this experience <laughs> Um, I guess the first off is um, experience definitely helps in this field. She's been in the political scene for about 30 years uh, and has gained a lot of credibility and power through that. And apart from that, I realized that um, in a more real sense, um, what it means to be kind of like a leader, even minority leader, majority leader of whatever party you are in, you have to run a pretty tight ship. Uh, and because you represent the forefront of your party, and I mean, for example, in the healthcare thing, um, she managed to craft this kind of bill within that short amount of time against the words of the um, White House Chief of Staff. So there's a lot that you have to put in um, bet between the relationships um, within the people in your party. And finally, there are a lot of different committees with a lot of different um, jobs and focuses. So uh, I guess from that, it's just the government kind of covers a lot of things. Um, and there's just so many different issues within the US and within the world that um, pro uh, Congress has to deal with every day. And thank you. Cool, great, good job, good job.